the side of the pond, should we? Because Donald Trump has hit back at prosecutors just hours before his court appearance on charges of trying to overturn the results of the 2020 election. Yes, the former president said the indictment was unprecedented and showed the corruption of the Biden presidency. Well, it's the third time in four months he's been charged, and as we understand it, probably not the last, as he campaigns to regain the presidency. Meanwhile, his son, his eldest, Donald Jr., spoke to Nigel Farage last night, and he questions the timing of the indictment. You know, I, I don't believe any of this has anything to do with January 6th. If it did, and if January 6th was everything that they said, why, why, Nigel, did they wait two and a half years to charge him? I mean, the people that were there that did those, they were charged that day. Well, let's talk to Jan Halper-Hayes, who's a U.S. political analyst, and he's here in the studio. Good to see you, as always. Good to see you. Good to see you. Um, there's so many people putting this down as a political conspiracy theory, but actually there are real questions to be answered here. There are? Yeah, of course there are. Of course there are. What he's being accused of, but what part do you think is to answer that the 2020 election is going to be re-litigated because of this? They've made a huge, huge mistake with this one because... Even though we thought what was going to happen was they were going to go after him for treason or sedition, but they did criminally charge him, but they didn't go to that extreme. As a result, he has due process, so he can subpoena people and bring things in. Now, let me say something about this 2020 election, is that Biden is the legitimate president, but he's the legitimate president of what is now the bankrupt U.S. corporation. And that was a treaty in 1871. Well, on September 12th, 2018, Trump created an executive order. Within that, he outlined in future elections any kind of foreign or domestic interference, specifically for the 2020 election. So we say, how did he know some of these things were going to happen? Election integrity on both sides of the aisle is tough. It's really tough. But what this has done is it's opened the door for Trump to present his case. Well, that's a good thing, isn't it? Because, I mean, because the, I mean, what we see on this side of the pond is a very difficult situation where the legal system is politicized in the United States, which is abhorrent to us over right. here. So the fact that Trump can subpoena, some people saying it's a mistake by Jack Smith, but actually he can subpoena, we, you, the people can actually see evidence from both right. sides. That's a yes. sensible move. Exactly. And, and it's a great mistake by Jack Smith that he's done that. Absolutely great. See, the thing is, think about um, uh, Edward Snowden and all the information he had. Think about the fact that our military, our Department of Defense Space Force, <clears throat> if you think that they don't have the actual real results from the election, then you're fooling yourself. Yeah, but what we, what we do know with this is there are, we're told <clears throat> uh, uh, that there are plenty of notes from people, including Vice President um, Pence, that there are some recordings of, of Donald Trump acknowledging that actually what he said in public was nonsense. That some of these states, whether he claimed he was in, out saying it's, I mean, look, Detroit, it's corrupt, it's all corrupt, the results are corrupt. And that when in reality he knew it wasn't, that's illegal. Uh, but you know what? That's what someone's claiming, but that's not the fact, and that's not what Donald Trump really has ever said. He's been very, very clear. I mean, the issues were, for example, in Pennsylvania, the Supreme Court of the state of Pennsylvania stepped in and changed some of the election laws. Under our Constitution, it's only the state legislators that can do that. 2,000 Mules, the film that came out, what they did, they spent over $4 million tracking the phones. And the reason it's only 2,000 Mules is that based on the visits to the drop boxes in Georgia, they had to have gone over 10 times. And they've got all the film for that. So the thing is that... Um, the election integrity is so different and so problematic in every single state, every single state. But that doesn't mean that the machines didn't do something, 
that there were some other kind of finagling, but the long and short... Go ahead. Well, it, it doesn't... But that's, that's where conspiracy comes in, is it? To say, well, it doesn't mean that something didn't happen. Well, there's no evidence that it happened. I mean, well, there's how many, how many court cases did the Trump campaign try to bring? There's, nothing's gone in his favour. OK, wait a minute. Everyone, the media goes, oh, there were 60, 60 court cases that were rejected. No, there were three. He won two. He lost one. 57 were never heard because they had no standing. And standing means that the person bringing the case has to claim some kind of impact or injury. So it's really, you know, the media did that, and they're great at doing that, but it, it was a fallacy in there. And the thing is that... Um, you know, you know, I sit on a task force at the Department of Defense, and the thing is, they've got the goods. They've got the goods, and Trump knew that if he presented any of the goods early on, we'd have a civil war. That he really felt that the people needed to see how bad it could get. And that's the sense that we're getting from Trump's lawyer about what his defense is going to be. So he, this is all going to be based on free speech, the First Amendment in the U.S. Constitution, that he had a right to say what he believed. And mm -hmm. he believed uh, that the election results were not uh, as was put out. But the point is, if you live in a democracy and you believe in a democracy, then that means that even if you don't like the outcome of an election, you respect that because it's a democratic vote. Well, a, a democratic vote, and so therefore he should be silent about it. No, he, has a, he has a right to speak, but the issue, of course, is if he then acts to subvert that election result. Oh, so that because you think he's being criticized because in Georgia he said, can you find me 12,000 votes? Or, um, you know, the thing is, he didn't try to subvert anything. What he's really done is he set up the deep state to come out, and that's why we're seeing all these things. I mean, it just it was revealed with whistleblowers and um, Hunter Biden's ex-best friend that in 2015, um, the head of Burisma gave Joe and Hunter Biden 10 million bribe. In 2018... Hunter is, I mean, uh, Joe is on TV publicly saying that he threatened that unless they got the prosecutor fired, that um, he wasn't going to let them have their one billion in support. In 2019, Trump calls Zelensky to find out about what went on to get the prosecutor fired, and he gets impeached. Mm. I mean, that's... We've lived with it for a long time. I probably, I probably, that's, that's, we're almost out of time. I just, oh. want, I just want to pick you up on one thing. You said earlier on, you know, um, Donald Trump has been very clear on this. Is he a man that you believe? I mean, look, he's about as believable as a chocolate teapot, isn't he? Look, I know that... Oh, thank God you got the negativity in at the end and not the beginning. <laughs> I can always count on you for that. Always. Um, but it's a legitimate point to say that Donald Trump is a man who always speaks the truth. That can't be the case. I mean, it's hardly the case of any leader, to be fair, but, I mean, definitely not Donald Trump. Well, I don't know if I said everything or always, because I do call him the embellisher-in-chief, because he's mm. a marketer. Um, but in terms of telling us things... Optics, you better believe that he's very much a straight shooter in terms of actions that he's going to take or what he thinks needs to be done. You know, they made fun of him because they assumed he broke protocol and walked in front of the queen. No, if you go back and look at it, you will see he looked at her. She gave a wave with her hand. He proceeded. She took a couple of steps, he stopped, and he waited for her to join. That was an optic to tell us that he then was going to bankrupt the U.S. corporation because it was the Vatican, the Crown, and the U.S. that was part since 1871. And we were giving you our tax dollars. We were paying back. You know, we, forget this Tea Party and without taxation, without representation. We owed you a lot of money because you helped us in the Civil War. And so that is what Trump has now, to he told the Queen, I'm ending this. We're dissolving this corporation. 
we're going to go back to being a republic and we'll all be separate. The Pope wasn't happy. You should find the picture of him visiting the Pope. It took 650 planes to remove our gold from the Vatican Bank. I'm not very happy about it, Jan, to be perfectly honest. We could do with your money at the minute. <laughs> Keep it flowing, I say. Um, Jan Halperhey, it's really good to see you. Thank you, you too. very much.